Heads up, new miner arriving. Rock and stone, everyone. Welcome back to episode 14 of the How to Paint series for Deep Rock Galactic the board game. Today is a pretty quick video running through the various methods I choose to paint up the Glyphid Warden. I was fortunate enough to actually get the game in hand this week, so pretty cool. Uh, it is beautiful. They did a great job on the minis, so I can't wait to paint up the actual official ones in the box. Um, but yeah, let's get down to it. Quick uh, screenshot there from the end game. I stuck to some of the color ideas. Went with a mostly white prime on this one because I could tell I wanted to use that white carapace with just some, you know, shading on it and then focus on that pink shield mound in the back. As per my normal approach, uh, all the key points will be down below so you can skip around to your heart's content. And I apologize, I'm fighting a bit of a cold this week so voice is a little raspy, a little off, but I'll do the best I can. I start out with some homemade Agrax Earthshade to tint up the carapace brown. Sapia would probably work here as well. I'll link the recipe below if you'd like to make your own and don't have any Agrax. I also added a few drops of homemade Lamian Medium to it as well, just to thin it down a little bit. I didn't want this to overshade because I want a lot of that white to come through. Both these recipes were from um, Geek Gaming Scenics, uh, Luke's channel, so I will again link those and uh, I encourage you to try some of his recipes. They, they work pretty darn well. After spending some time spreading around the Agrax Earthshade evenly as possible, I clean my brush and I use it basically wet brush off some of the shade along those large ridges, uh, the points on the sides, and uh, the rear end area. So trying to dial back the shading to really just those deeper recesses on the carapace. I then use Hive Dweller Purple Speed Paint in the deepest grooves of that shield mound on its back and in some of the deep cracks on the side and the rear.
I decided to thin down purple alchemy speed paint with a one to three ratio of speed paint to the medium, speed paint medium. I wanted to get that pink color that it shows on the bottle. I find it comes out in almost a reddish purple if you don't thin it down. So uh, definitely some thinning was needed. Additionally, I applied this to the front underside of all the legs, lower body, inside the mouth, and helped transition out of those deep grooves that I put the purple in in the last step. Once again use the clean wet brush to now clean up some of the color that may have gotten in the areas I didn't want and wipe it away while that speed paint is still uh, wet not cured. I hit the model with some matte white dry brushing to bring back up those edge highlights on the back carapace and the outer leg carapace. I use Crusader Skin speed paint in the mouth on the leg joints where they attach to the body 
and the underside of the rear end I blend some into. A little more dry brush to fix back up the teeth after putting on the Crusader skin. I probably should have just stuck to the thin down purple alchemy on that shield dome on the back, but I wanted to try to pop it a little more, so I used some fluorescent pink ink from Dollar Rowney and a little bit of a glaze medium from the Vallejo and tried to punch it up a little bit with a few layers of that. For the base, I hit it with a quick Gravelord Gray Speed paint for the rocks and did the black ink around the edges with some matte medium mixed in to dole it down. The Warden's shield mount on the back is probably where I'll spend extra time when I get to painting the actual official inbox minis for my last attempt. Uh, this is definitely a focal point with those pink colors offset against that a very white carapace. Excellent performance. One mission to go and you got yourself a new weapon license. So here is the finished warden. Here's a few table length and up close shots just to kind of give you an idea of the look and feel of it. Sadly, I think the next video is the last in the Deep Rock series, though I might do a follow-up once the whole set has been painted out of the actual in-game box. Uh, I definitely had some ideas as I went through here on how to eh, spice the models up a little bit, revisit the driller, maybe do some rock basing in his, his drill bits and stuff, little things, you know, spice it up a little. So, we'll see. Uh, next week's probably just going to be, I think we got supply pod, or drop pod, yeah. And we got Bosco, some turrets, the rock, and I think there's a little loot bug, but I think that was print only. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll do a golden loot bug or something, just for the heck of it. We'll see. Um, after that, there's a very large pile of shame from all the Kickstarters that showed up in the last three or four months sitting on my game table, so I'll probably dive into the next one, either Skyrim, Darkest Dungeon, might backtrack the Bard song, I don't know. There's not a lot of content out there to get going with, so I'll record them as I go and throw them out there as well as additional guides, and hope they'll help somebody. As always, I appreciate uh, the subs and likes and the feedback from everyone that's stopped by. You know, this has been a lot of fun for me. I really never thought I'd be doing YouTube stuff. So it's been an adventure. So as always, thanks. See you soon.